I'm wearing glasses, so. Okay, hey guys, um, Chris, the Natural Progressive. I have with me today Patrick Hanna. He is, um, like, I don't know. He is definitely a realist, believes in the near-term human extinction. Um, we are going to talk a lot about XR and anything else that comes up, but this is a really important conversation that more people should be having uh, pointing out potential conflicts and everything with with these movements, um, as well as the good points of these movements. So, Patrick Canna, go ahead and say hi. Hi, people, friends, and whoever. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of people already have seen you on the Environmental Coffee House because a lot of her followers follow me as well, which is amazing because Environmental Coffee House is a great place to get together with, um, <laughs> yeah, with other people that are struggling with the same issues that we are. So Patrick, I first want to ask you about your experience and, and how you got down this, this reality, um, rabbit hole, like what's going on and, and all that, like, what led you to this well, near-term human extinction analysis? And... Of course, it was it was a uh, journey. Um, it was uh, progressive, I guess you'd say it. Um, I started back about in the '90s. I've ever since a kid, I was a kid. I've been fascinated with weather and climate change. Uh, the '90s, when I when I first under heard about the El Nino in the early '90s. I think that's kind of was the catalyst to kind of really start me uh, researching this whole phenomenon. And that's what they started leading one thing after another, you know, El Nino, climate change, global warming. I, I'm, I used to like the term climate change, but that's, uh, I don't like that term anymore. I mean, global warming is more accurate. Yes, it is. Well, the right wing is what changed it to well, climate change it, so they could say the climate always changes and all that right. stuff. If you're going to use the word, the term climate change, we should start using abrupt climate change. Because that's yes, what it is. abrupt climate change leading to right. near-term human extinction. But I don't even like the near-term human extinction term. And this is why. Because it's not just humans. Mm. Because... Yeah. You can't save the planet by focusing on one individual species and their survival. That's my problem with that term. It's like, don't make it a, I mean, not that we can save the planet at this time, but making it all about humans kind of pisses me off a little. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Um, yeah, we're such egocentric, mm -hmm. uh, 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 human supremacy yes. I, makes me livid. It makes me live. That's the only word I can think of right now is that we think we are the almighty. We think they are, we're the most supreme beings on this planet because, you know, we, we live on this planet. Yeah. We we... Don't, but people don't realize we need all the other species. We're, we're, yes. We are supposed to be symbiotic creatures. We need each other. Yes. Yes. So, and and fun. while I feel bad for human suffering, I feel just as bad for, for the dying off of the rest of the planet. I'm right there with you. So but, this is a huge right, discussion that we have to have, and not enough people are having it. Right. Yes, yeah, I agree. Totally agree. And, and the, the, you know, a couple of years ago, I was it, the trying to yell up, yell from the mountaintops and, and yell and scream at people, why aren't people paying attention? But, you know, it, it after a while, it, it, felt like I was talking on deaf ears that people would be like, Oh yeah, I know it's bad, but they're don't really, either don't care or doesn't, they're just going to continue with business as usual because that's what humans do. And the worst um, argument I've heard is it's, it's, uh, it's just white privilege, white Western country privilege um, to worry about the planet. And, right. and, I'm sorry, but it's everybody's problem. But I, well, yeah, pe people think that each individual person, except for pe the people in our arena, uh, you know, we, they like even coworkers, just whatever the general public, they don't think that their lifestyle has a high carbon footprint. 
every time I go to Costco or Sam's Club or whatever those wholesalers, mm-hmm. that is the epitome of consumption. Yes. And that's what we it's need to excellent. stop. Consumption. It's, I it's, mean, well, not only that, it but. It makes me sick. It mm-hmm. makes me sick every time I go to Costco. And because it's abundance of consumerism. I mean, right. when you can buy in bulk of everything, I mean, unless you're prepping, which I'm starting to do, which, okay, now prepping almost, okay, do I want to be the last person alive on earth? No. Me either. I also don't want to be the first person either. Right. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, yeah. But, but, but when you're consuming in bulk, it, that it, it's contradictory. When you're, I mean, even as I was checking out at the counter, I only get the bare essentials, coffee, cereal, milk, just the bare essentials. Don't coffee, you feel milk. a little guilty about coffee because they don't grow it in the U.S.? Y- yes, and I know that's going to be one of the first casualties of, of abrupt climate change, too. That and chocolate. That's, yeah, <laughs> I could live without chocolate, but coffee, I don't know. I could but, totally live without chocolate. The coffee is going to be a hard one. I'm like, why can't we too. grow it in the U.S.? Maybe we can once climate changes a little bit more. I don't know. Yeah, but it, but, but it really just the consumerism yeah. uh, in general just irks me. I mean, I consider myself a minimalist. I, You know, there are things that I, I, I do have an itch every now and then to get like a new television. But the one I have works just fine. Same thing, same thing with my phone. It's, is, it, is it the latest and greatest? No, it works just fine. I wait till my screen is broken. The thing like right. takes ten years to punch it to make it work. And my tennis shoes, yeah. my tennis shoes are in you know in the process of falling apart. So are mine. They still work. Yeah. They still cover. You know, they may not be waterproof anymore, but they my still work. my cowboy boots work for a lot longer. My my newest pair of cowboy boots are five years old, and that's mostly what I wear. I don't yeah. wear. I, I wear flip flops and cowboy boots. That's <laughs> pretty much. I have a pair of tennis shoes that I wear, but man, one year and they were tore up. My cowboy boots last forever. I. It's like, why do you need to have all these like the shoe fetish women have? Is I never got that. I've why never do you got need that. Twenty pairs of shoes. I don't because it's got to match your outfit. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. god. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, they're trying to impress other women because the men don't give a shit what their shoes are. I certainly don't. (laughs) They really, really, it's really true. I mean, if you really want to talk about textile clothing, I'm, I'm anti clothing. Um, and we can talk about that some other time, but, um, that sounds interesting. Yeah. We got a lot to cover though, because. I really well, want to go seriously into XR and your opinions on that because I have my own concerns. Well, well, but it takes a lot of fossil fuels energy to make clothing. So. Yes, it does. I have clothing that are at least 20 years old. Um, and then you got to wash them, which takes energy. Yes. And dry them takes energy. And people wear them once and wash them when they could wear them more right. than once before they wash them unless they're doing a dirty ass job that makes them filthy why do they wash them every right. time they wear them you know and I, and for that I, matter I, showers every fucking morning if you're not working right. a dirty sweaty job why the hell are you doing that you right. know it, it's bad for your skin and it's bad for your hair and it's bad for the planet i mean why would you be doing that right I, I don't understand that concept at all, but I was raised that way. My mom raised me to, to really conserve water. I mean, you don't right. leave the faucet running when you're brushing your teeth. Your shower right. is five minutes, and it's not every day. And right. it's it's like, she'd like, okay, twice a week, three times a week, that's it, tops. Yep. And yep. It, oh my God, nowadays it's like, you need to shower every day or you're disgusting it's like no you're not disgusting i mean especially if you're working a fucking office job don't tell me you're getting stinky working an office job right. <laughs> sitting on the computer right. yeah you're sweating a lot yeah that's right. gonna be stinky oh my god people i work a very physical job but you know i can come home and wash the important areas and and right. everything and get by without a shower for two, three days, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I, 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 and people are going to think I'm nasty for doing that. That's what's really sad. But I'm sorry. I'm using less water than you, so screw off. Well, <laughs> well, I don't do laundry very much. I do it once a week, but that's for me and my husband and two loads that's tops not, once a week. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, it's more than I would like. And I, and I wish I could dry it um, naturally. But when you work, me that's too. kind of unrealistic. When you're home, you could do that. I, I was raised with that. I and mean, we had a rack in our laundry room mm -hmm. that you we just took things out of the washer and laid them on the rack. And that's how they dried, you know. But right. I don't have that space to do that in this house. Me neither. I, I live in an apartment, so. Yeah, sometimes you don't have that. the space. You can't put a clothesline outside. We could put a clothesline outside, but it only works during the summer, I guess. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, how can I be more um, morally responsible for my imprint? And, and But the sad thing is, it doesn't matter what I do as an individual because of the war machine, because of, of what, you know, corporations are doing. A hundred corporations cause 70% of the pollution, you know, all the transportation of food. And so, because, I'm, well, yeah, so at the way I think of it, yeah, I mean, yes, it is. It seems uh, contradictory, but uh, I like the idea of saving money. Mm -hmm. But now, what's that going to do? Money won't be worth crap. You can't eat it. Yes, that's true. But it's still, the, the minimalism, save mm -hmm. money. Well, the way I like to say it, I like to spend, you got to prioritize what you spend your money on. Mm -hmm. And that, like to me, why the hell not? I mean, I, I mean, even though I do have a girlfriend, I consider myself single. Uh, because it's, it's, You're not married. Uh, you have a girlfriend. <laughs> but yeah, but then again, she's on the West Coast and I'm in Michigan. Oh, wow. Long distance Long relationship. Distance. Been there, done that. Yeah, that sucks. But, <laughs> uh, so what, what, what I was trying to get at is I treat myself, I mean, as much as I would love to have a girlfriend with me physically, um, I treat myself to a nice meal, you know, uh, nice and a gourmet meal and a few glasses of wine whatever so mm. that's where i put my money because i might as well enjoy it while we can yeah uh, i definitely understand that concept i do i i personally do not like um i don't spend more money on material things i spend money on things that I yeah experiences do. and experience and and like and, and some people, some people might be upset at this, but when I do take vacations, I can finally, uh, now that I'm um, uh, finally achieved financial uh, stability and, and comfort, uh, because I don't spend money on materialistic things, I can travel first class. Yeah. I mean, some people don't like. Some people don't like that, but again no I, I i get it you know someone's gonna be there that plane's gonna go whether you're on it or not i no, i understand I that i just like i can't do it i i i honestly i i would have a really hard time buying a plane ticket i have a hard time going to a concert in a city that's two hours away right. um and and my most of my vacations are camping trips um 20 minutes Same away here. so Same here. Yeah, and and that's what I really enjoy being out in nature, and that, and I think that's less of a footprint. It's like I'm utilizing less energy when right. I'm out there. I'm you eat the same right. and all that, but you may use a little bit of gas to get up there. But it's so close. We used to go right. two hours away to go camping with big trucks and you know two trucks and a horse trailer and and all that wow. stuff to go camping. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing the two hour road trip right. again to go camping. We're just gonna go. We have these beautiful mountains here. Why not enjoy those? Right. And and not go so far. We have big trucks, but we only drive them um, maybe three times a year. You know, they're, and they're old trucks. Um, we rescue them. They probably would have been melted down and recycled, recycled which would cost a lot more in, in, um, in carbon emissions if you recycle them than if you get a brand new vehicle which i couldn't afford right. anyway but yeah we we reuse old vehicles and make them last a long time and it's way more energy efficient as far as fossil fuels and 
and destruction to the environment to mine the materials and, and all that way less destructive to the environment than buying something new even an electric car because mm -hmm. there's those programs and i speak out against class, cash for clunkers those stupid programs are freaking ridiculous it's all only pushing consumerism exactly it's pushing you to buy something that's supposed to make you new, feel good new. Yep. but it doesn't help the environment because of all the 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 mining and and the production that goes into them it just cancels out what yep. benefit especially when you consider the melting down of the older vehicle that could still be reused um granted i'd like to get rid of fossil fuels altogether and just use you know people live locally so they don't have to travel you know, growing their own food and all that. That's kind of what I'm pushing for more than, um, more than anything. I, I think that's a better solution. Rewilding, protecting, um, all that stuff, which is what Greta said, which, oh my God, Greta, her, uh, uh. She's, ador she's adorable. Um, I love her to death and I admire her passion, but again, uh, like I said earlier, if it wasn't for global dimming, I would be so in favor of of of, of doing that. I mean, you know. It's, you know, it's, but uh, okay. See, I've struggled with global dimming too, and there are a few people on the channel, you know, that would really like to discuss global dimming more. They don't think we discuss it enough. So um, this is probably a good topic to get into because of that. Okay, this is my viewpoint, and this is why I don't focus on global dimming as much as I did when I first, first started. I know it's a thing. I, I absolutely know it's a thing. But if if the collapse happens sooner rather than later, and, and we do less damage, it will take the Earth less time to recover than, than if we just keep it going, you know, just to eke an existence along. You know what I mean? So I'm more concerned about the planet overall than than my existence. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, like I told Sandy, um, I'm not afraid of death. I'm afraid of suffering. Not yes, only, me too. Yes, me too. Not, not only humans, but like you said, other animals and other species. Yes. Yes. And That's the hard part. Species. We need those species to survive yeah we don't live or, in a bubble we need microorganisms no. we need fungi we need all these yeah. things to survive and people don't get that they think we can live in an actual bubble right they haven't been able to do that in all the tests they've done you know you know out here they have a, a mars simulation thing and i guess they've done it up in the arctic too and they're trying it in all kinds of different places underwater things and so far they haven't been been able to replicate replicate the natural environment of earth um in its healthy form i guess I don't know. right um it, it would only last so long they they can't sure. you need to have a true right. ecosystem you need to have exactly. habitat you can't live in a bubble but Sorry, cat hair all over me <laughs> ah i understand right now we have four cats living in the house and that's unheard of here usually we have four dogs and we had one cat now we have four cats and two dogs and cat hair freaking everywhere yeah, i just have one cat and it's hard enough to deal with <laughs> it must be a long hair <laughs> it is very yes it is a long hair. yeah ours are short hair but they're still and they're cute as hell. Oh my god, yeah. I love all animals. I can't help oh, it. Oh, I do too. I did. I, well, I wish I could have a dog, but you know, because I'm alone and work, you know, 42, 43 hours a week, it's still not fair to the dog to. Yeah. To be home in nine hours a day. So. Where it's just you, yeah. I mean, there's, we kind of live in a communal situation, so there's me and my husband, my daughter and her boyfriend, and soon to be. Um, a good friend of the family is going to move into the other room because I believe in filling up every room that you have in, in not wasting space, living space and, and working collaboratively together. We do gardens, we take care of the animals all together. So that's, that's what I believe in, but I'm weird. <laughs> okay. So, all right, we go off on tangents. Of that's, course. That's just what we do. 
let's see if we can get back on track. So, um, what do you think about XR being used to push a corporate agenda? There's, there's been multiple reports of XR, like getting money from corporations and, and businesses and all that. In fact, I watched a video a few weeks ago about, it was a meeting with XR and there was this guy who does like runs a solar panel business and he was like, how can I help? I want to help. And, and they're like, give us your money. I mean, this was one of the people on stage saying, give us your money. And I like from a business that, that has a stake in the game. No, this should be a people's movement, not a corporation or a business or anything. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Am I crazy for... No, I totally agree with you uh, on that. Uh, for, um, it should not be monetized. Mm -hmm. the, the, I mean, like, I don't know what the alternative is. Uh, I'm Individuals to... who care? Right, right. Exactly. It, it, it takes, yeah, we should, like you said, I mean, we, we should not all, we shouldn't fly, I mean... And we shouldn't. No, I mean individuals that care if they want to donate to XR. Oh, that's so fine. Right. But well, so but people who have a, a stake in it, like they can make money off of it. They those donations should be like, no, sorry, we no, don't want it. No, it should not be for profit, not at all. Because corporations but, cause this problem. Capitalism causes this problem. I agree. So I agree. Well, I think they should say. I I I. I kind of agree with that it's not capitalism it, it's consumption well consumption is what capitalism is capitalism, based on but it, well it, it, it's capitalism and it's also um the media telling us that we need it Saying, yes hey, you need this you need the biggest and greatest thing you need this you need an iphone you need you need this great product you need this you need mm -hmm. that you need this you need to buy this food why, why, you know, I work in healthcare and the, 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 the generation that I love is the people who are now 80s, 90s, 100s. Everything was good food back then. They didn't have all this processed shit that's making us obese and unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And now... I mean, it, it, again, it's just consumerism. And, and, and why do we consume it? Because people tell us. And, oh, well, and yes, consumerism, it, the cheap stuff is the, the stuff that's horrible for you. Yeah. They make the good stuff super expensive. Yeah. So that we're, the, the, they're trying to influence what we buy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you have to have the latest, greatest TV. You have to have the latest and greatest, like, car. You have, it's I mean, there's symbolism. people I... It's status symbols. Oh, yeah. Being in Utah, there's no bigger state than, I mean, they call Missouri the show me state, but but Utah is like the I'm better than you state. Like they, they have to be better than the next guy because of their religion says if you have, if you're, um, if you're good, you get blessed with with things like material right. things and right. money. So everyone wants to look like they're blessed. So they do everything they can. They go out in debt. They, they just buy the latest and greatest thing. And it spills over to non-Mormons too, because then once non-Mormons see what the Mormons have, they're like, Oh, I'm better than you. And I, and, and it's just a, a crazy, crazy snowball from hell well, that keeps building. The biggest, biggest byproduct of capitalism is greed oh yeah and, 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 and i think that until we solve the greed issue i don't think whatever monetary system we have is, is that people are, are are brainwashed into the the fallacy that money equals happy you know wealth belonging possessions equal happiness and that's the capitalistic yeah. society and that's why we need to change and get out of name, capitalism name name one well i mean You'd be hard pressed to name three people, billionaire people who are quote unquote happy. Right. Don't you think there should be a limit? Like there should be a limit on both ends, like a low, like you need to have this much equity to survive, but a top end limit, like 
okay, $150,000, $200,000 a year, that's it. That's all you can make. After that, you have to give it all away to rewild nature, um, put money into, to not, I'm sorry, I'm not for the Green New Deal or anything like that because I think it's it's going to be just more destructive than it would be helpful. Um, yeah, I agree. Oh, I'm glad you agree, because that's a really unusual position to take. Um, well, not for everybody, but for a lot of people in this sphere, it's like, no, we want the Green New Deal. I'm like, no, we don't. I mean, we if don't. you if you can imagine how much energy it would take to mine the materials and, and produce right. the materials needed to put that in place. Right. Oh, my God, people aren't using their brains. They're like, oh, a simple answer. That's easy. Get the politicians to put in the, imp and it's all based on growth, and that's right. why I was so impressed with Greta with her thing about the fairy tale of of eternal growth. It's like, oh my God, she said it, and I can't believe she said that. <laughs> that was amazing, and and but the independent media still didn't get it. They were sitting there still pushing the Green New Deal using her speech, and I'm like, did you actually listen to her speech? I'm just curious if you actually got the well, point of it that, i don't know but, but that's where i get depressed is because they still don't get it mm -hmm. that, that that humanity is stupid they are stupid i'm sorry that's I, well and, and you know and this is mm -hmm. this actually kind of helps me with um uh, uh acceptance is that sometimes, as, uh, collectively as a species, I don't think we deserve this planet. Do I don't. Know? I don't think so either. I think we deserve to go extinct, and that's really I sad. So. There are times when I actually cheer on NTHE. You know, because get get us these this species out of here, and I think mm -hmm. Earth is doing that. The the climate uh, we're, we're we're fucking it up beyond. You know, we're foobarring it. <laughs> Big time, oh, and, uh, and people want to make it worse. Worse. And That's, so I think yeah. I think like George Carlin. I uh, love George Carlin, and he's got Me too. He's, uh, ahead of his time. And I way think way ahead of his times. We're destroying the planet and ourselves and everything. Unfortunately, we're going to take everything everything with us. We absolutely are. It's all a matter of time, and no one knows exactly what that time frame is. <sighs> but I I used, a, I used to be a firm. Like as early as two years ago, I used to be a firm believer in guys twenty twenty six. That's debatable. Uh, I can I can comfortably say twenty thirty. Um, that's ten years. I think I'm pretty comfortable with twenty thirty, but I think things are gonna get pretty bad after next right. year. I think right. there's gonna be a lot of disasters, and I think the the feedback loops are gonna start kicking in big time. Right, and there's like. There's yeah, a lot of stuff but, happening. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that we're going to be extinct. I'm just saying that things are going to get real oh, yes. next oh, yes. year, like for our country, you know, not just That's Australia so where animals are dropping dead left and right. Well, and, I mean, more and more countries are, are, are running out of water. Yeah. That, that alone is scary as shit. Oh, uh, yeah. There's so many guns pointed at her head. So many. Well, there's India, now Australia is facing day zero. Um, places in Africa mm -hmm. um, you know Kevin Hester and I one of the things that we we both agree on is the next the next major El Nino will basically be the nail in the coffin for us mm -hmm. um, it, it, it will I mean it seems like everyone gets every El Nino gets worse if we have another big one like we had in 2015-16 I think that's the nail in the coffin isn't it like um, borderline right between it's like neutral but it's looking yeah. like it could uh, it's, it, well i think we're still a, a year well what what worries me now is the big hot blob and the yes the the blob, the blob. <laughs> off the pacific coast although i don't i don't fully understand it yet so i don't blob. either i'm trying to like but what, what would that do i, I know, know it's so bad <laughs> it's gonna kill a lot of ocean life there and it's gonna it's kill a, a lot of um like animals that live along the coast more, as well more, more importantly i think it's going to affect the reef trees of the arctic oh yeah because the warm water right yeah is not going to allow I mean, do you know, watch see more rocks i'm just curious do you know who he is he was Western, Western, yes 
he was talking about how the the refreeze was, you know, like iffy. Like if it's if right. it's gonna be slowed down if it the stays warm it stays warm like it is, I think it'll be way slow down. Like Yeah, the warm water makes more of a difference than the, the air. Like with temperatures right. on land, the warm water is gonna eat it, undercut it. Very familiar with undercutting um of such I worked on um in a salt plant for a while, like where they oh, wow. mine salt and and salt is kind of like ice. When water hits it, it it melts, right? So when you work in that environment and you can see how easily just a little tiny water drip can can undercut a section and then you step on it and you can fall right into it. It's, it, it can create a huge hole. And it's the same thing with ice. So... Well, it, if I had to pick one thing that, that really scares the shit out of me is the Arctic. Not only loss of ice, but the methane from the permafrost. Oh, yeah. And then the diseases that are stuck in the permafrost as well. Right. There's so many things. And then the lack of food supply because our soil is is getting nasty. degraded. And um, but, but Arctic monoculture. Is, I, I call the Arctic the first domino. Mm -hmm. It's the first big domino. Once we lose the Arctic... Oh, we're done once we lose the Arctic, but there's so oh, many yeah. things that could get us before that. Right. But so. That, uh, well, uh, yeah, there, yeah, probably, but I think the Arctic is the big one. It's a horse race. There's like nine horses in a race. Let's see which right. one wins. That's pretty right. much what it is. I mean, Sam Mitchell, Collapse Chronicles, I can't steal that from him. That's what he said. And he's so right, though. There's so many issues. There's food shortages, water shortages, poisoning of the water. <coughs> There's so many things that that we have to look forward to that right. <coughs> our kids have to look forward to. Do you have kids? I don't. You're so lucky. I mean... I, I am lucky to have my kids. I love my kids. Don't get me wrong. I love all of them, but you're so lucky not to have to worry about them. Well, that's like I, I chose. Well, there's two main reasons why I chose not to have kids. Number one, I could barely take care of myself, let alone somebody else. And number two, it became increasingly, I would want to bring a new life into this world when it, I know it's going to be shit. Yes. Okay, so... I didn't choose it happened because I was a stupid young kid and apparently didn't know how to use birth control correctly, but I did ask to have my tubes tied. I, if it was my choice, I would have not had kids mm -hmm. because I never wanted to have kids ever. But now I have three kids of my own and three step kids. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, and I get a lot of shit for that. It's like, yeah, it's your brain. I'm sorry, but I was in my, you know, 19 to 23. Fuck you. If you don't understand that I was a stupid kid, I still way before that wanted to not have kids. So people can judge me all they want and they will. They just do. They, they give me all kinds of crap. It is. It is. You, can't, uh, you can't undo it. So yeah. The toothpaste is already out of the tube. Right. Right. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I can't control that. Well, and that's, and that's why, you know, I even knew when I was younger, like, I thought about, you know, the people that don't have kids, they have stuff, mm -hmm. material things, toys. But yeah. I wanted to go further than that. You know, well, I, I have to admit, when I was younger, in the 20s and early 30s, I still had the materialistic mind until I learned about NTHE. And then ever since then, around the 2014 timeline, I said, you know, screw the materialistic stuff. I want experiences and mm -hmm. good food and, you know. That kind I think of I've always kind of been that travel. way, though. Like, not with travel and all that, but, like, with my horses. Well, a little bit of travel. I wanted to travel with my horses to go see all the wildlands and stuff until I re learned how destructive that is. Um, right. But I wasn't really materialistic as wanting as far as wanting the bigger house, the fancier kind of house. The... I, well, I, I was from an upper, I was raised in an upper middle class household and, and we had all those things. And I wanted to, I wanted those for myself. But it wasn't until I learned this stuff that I changed. 
Oh, you're freezing. Are you still there? Can you hear me?
Okay, so guys, so sorry about that interruption. Um, we got disconnected. Gotta love um, the internet. <laughs> My horrible connection and and everything. Who knows what it is? Uh, that was really weird because I was fine on other sites. I just couldn't access my Gmail and Zoom wasn't. Yeah. Anyway, long story. So we were talking about. Oh, what were we talking about? I don't remember, but we can fire. You can fire off a question, and we'll go from there. Okay. I have. What do you think of the Citizens Assembly, and do you think that will do any good at all getting that implemented? Do you think we could get that implemented? Do you think there's enough pressure to do that with? Um, and even if we do, is there a way to keep out corporate interests when Extinction Rebellion is accepting corporate money? Um, Fox com comes to mind and there's oh the other thing i wanted to mention is here in utah there was a news story saying that corporations were giving people paid time off to participate in these environmental strikes including xr um that makes me nervous really nervous so yeah. um i'm just checking something um okay. so i I'm not, I, yeah, I, I, I would have to agree with you. It makes me nervous too, but I, I, I'm not sure if I know enough about it. Go um, watch Hierophant has a video, two videos on XR that are very enlightening. He's not against the, the movement in general. There's just like me, he has concerns about the corporation's involvement in it. That's the only concern I have because corporations aren't going to solve this problem. If they're involved, they, they're involved for a monetary reason. It has nothing to do right. with them wanting to solve the problems. So that is my huge concern. And I want to get that concern out there, even though I support Greta Thunberg and what she is doing, especially since her last video, the, the speech and, and the video that she did on the natural solution. That's the only thing I'm pushing for because that's the only um, attempt at a solution that doesn't have unintended consequences there's no right. no unintended consequences to rewilding there's no unintended con unintended consequences to preserving or putting right. money into those two things so that is what i'm pushing for and that's the only thing i don't want any money going into the corporation's pockets because they are they do not have our best interest or the planet's interest at heart so i agree 100 percent 100% with that. Okay, cool. That was a, that's a huge point I wanted to make and and I'm going to reiterate my one point that you cannot save the planet focusing on one species. One species and expect you know to to save uh, I I did it better. Okay, I'm going to read exactly what I wrote down because <laughs> I suck. <laughs> Can't save the planet if you focus, only focus on the welfare of one species instead of focusing on the whole, the whole biosphere and ecosystems and um, habitat for for everything that that we have on this planet. And that is the movement I would like to see. XR go to they go through you know the citizens assembly great but how are you going to implement that how are you going to get the elites out of power they're not going to let go of that power you know they'll be holding on to it you know with their cold dead hands they're yeah. still going to be holding on to that power especially if they're involved in the m movement they're not going to help with any real change they're just well, going to try to sell their wares that's all they're, they're going to do it's hidden agendas is all, they, all it is yeah, and I don't blame that on Greta. I think she's sincere. I do, I do especially with her speech where she said, you know, fairy tale of, of eternal economic growth. You know, all you're concerned about is the money, you yeah. know, uh, and, and then her her video about the natural solution. Okay, those things, 
make me support Greta. But the minute a corporation gets involved, I get suspicious. And I think we all should get suspicious when corporations get involved and put their money interest in it. And that seems to be what's happening with XR. And I really wanted to talk to somebody, but um, see, I'm all confused because I had all these messages. But um, they, they canceled their interview with me, the state one, the state XR representative canceled their interview with me probably because I brought up concerns like that. Um, and that makes me nervous. It's like, yeah. Yeah. You, if you, you can't separate, until you separate the money from the whole XR movement, mm-hmm. it's going to be difficult to achieve yeah. any progress. Ah, I agree. I agree. I agree. But I, I, don't I know, really I don't like. Know how to do that? I don't know how to do that. I don't, I don't know, know how to do money. that. Well, first of all, XR should not be saying, "Yeah, we want your money." When when a company says, "How do I help?" Don't say, "I want your money." You know, yeah. don't put your money into it. Maybe speak your piece because we all have free speech. But don't no, don't accept their money because then they'll expect something. There, there's always something in return they expect. And that's why I have mixed emotions about the whole thing. Yeah, especially solar panel company, because I'm sorry, they that's not going to help. We can't re- totally rebuild our infrastructure and expect to save the planet. We need to lower our lifestyle instead right. of um, bringing up the third world, or wait, first world, you know, the underdeveloped. Right. Uh, I always get those backwards. It's Jevons, it's Jevons paradox is what it is. Yes. It is... is... <laughs> When you make something more efficient, it doesn't it doesn't lower your consumption. It allows you to use more of it. Yes, and that's exactly what's happened. As much wind power, solar power, and other power that we've added, we have still raised up the fossil fuel usage right. and all that. So we're not saving anything there. And not only that, it takes fossil fuel energy to build these windmills. And yeah, duh. They don't magically appear just because you right. say, let's pass some legislation to make it a- appear. And then, bam, there it is. No, you're destroying natural lands mm-hmm. in order to produce it. I'm actually, um, th- th- this is kind of funny. It, it, that brought a light bulb to my mind is that one th- my dream, so to speak, is to live off grid. I know Me it's too. Difficult, but I still would love to do it. Me too. I would absolutely, and I'm working on it. Actually, I'm really trying very hard to to be in that I have, position. I have a, a friend of mine who lives in Michigan here, and he's trying going to move somewhere. I forgot where he's moving to, but uh, he actually is a part time engineer, and and he works on designs for composting toilets. Nice. So, I think everyone should have a composting toilet or, I, or an outhouse. Right. <laughs> right. Well, my family used to own property up in northern Canada, and mm-hmm. it, w- it was almost off-grid, almost off. We had a generator, but we also had an outhouse, too. Nice. We did have plumbing, but it, it had an outhouse as well. I think that's fab- I want to put an outhouse here, and I'm kind of in not super rural. It's kind of rural, but not super rural. We have two I mean, they can acres. Be semi- they can be pretty sanitary if you do it right. Oh yeah, you just have to dig the hole deep enough, and and then add add, add some sawdust some, or whatever. Whatever, there, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, I, I would love to, if I could find property or whatever. You know, I don't know. Mm. You have, I mean, the the concept of the tiny home, the tiny house. Oh, I know. I've been addicted to those videos on the tiny houses. I'm like, I want to be a minimalist. I want one too. I, I want I'm. One too. Ooh, I talked to my husband about it. He's like, no, because he has so many things and he's attached to his things. And I hate that yeah, so see, bad. Yeah, me too. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not attached to things. It's hard to be married and be a doomer, minimalist type of person. It's really hard. <laughs> That's why I feel very lucky to, to, to have a, my girlfriend also a doomer as well. That's cool. I'm working on my husband. We'll get there. But I don't know how much memory my computer will be able to handle and still upload this tonight by 7. So is there any last... I mean, I'm trying to see if there's anything important other... I mean, okay, one qu- one quick thing that's really important. Population. If XR doesn't talk about um, reducing the population... In, in their speeches and I think some of them have but other ones have been pushing the Green New Deal so um, 
how important do you think it is to reduce our population to even oh. have a minute chance of saving the planet? Wow, the loaded question. Um, yeah, it so... is. <laughs> <laughs> and it brings um, a lot of hate along with it if you answer it honestly. Right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, I can only give my thoughts because I don't have children. I think, again, because we're born into and addicted to the infinite growth paradigm, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be extremely difficult to change people's minds. Um, I'm finding that to, out. Yes. You know, yeah, I mean, if we had the time, I would be all for it. But I think, uh, I think NTHC is going to take care of it for us, but um, the, the, the depopulation. But, you know, I don't think this world was meant to have 8 billion or more people on. No, we've, we're planet. definitely an overshoot. I don't think well, that's a question. Oh, we, we passed overshoot a long time ago. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's already, we. The, the world overshoot day keeps getting earlier and earlier throughout the year. So, mm -hmm. but again, like in the past 30 or 40 years, we've not, we haven't done anything in the past 30 or 40 years. And it's serious. No. Um, now, what is the solution? Um, do we, and an extreme example would be to adopt a one or two child, child one or two child policy. But that, that's infringing on people's rights. I don't think that's even necessary, honestly. What I think, I mean, it may become necessary if, if other solutions don't work, but I think the, the easiest way to start is, number one, a PSA, you know, public service announcement, letting, know, letting people know that if they have a baby, their baby might be suffering in the future mm -hmm. that may not have food, water, you know, basic necessities. There's that. And then you could go and, and offer women, um, birth control, um, you know, like being sterile education, men to education. It would have to be worldwide though. Not yes. It would have to be absolutely, absolutely worldwide and have to be free. Right. But, but the right wing hard. will not allow that to happen. They don't want women to have those choices. And I right. know that because I'm in a right wing state that would not allow me to be fixed until I had three children. So that is bullshit. For one, why yeah. do the guys get to have a vasectomy without any children? And then the women can't not get fixed until they have three. What well, the hell is wrong with that picture? Right. I agree with that. And, and I think it should not be the, whatever... The, the education should not be just for women; it should be for everybody. Yes, everybody. That's why I'm saying the public service announcements start pushing public opinion towards the fact, the facts, the reality of what we're facing, so that they don't say, "Oh, well, you know, life is going to be beautiful. I'm going to have my family, and I'm going to have kids and grandkids and great grandkids and and all that." When that's not the reality that we're facing right now, so quit pushing that. But that's that's not going to happen, and that's why I'm a doomer. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, there are no easy solutions. But. There there aren't any, but at least you could do tax breaks for people that don't have children. That's not going to happen. Um, I wish that would happen for me. <laughs> more, more, more taxes on people who choose to have a lot of children that put that burden on society. That would be great, but it's not going to happen. So that's why I'm a doomer. <laughs> right. Well, and that's another reason I decided not to have children either is financial. Yeah. And, and that's a, I think that's a big reason my kids haven't had kids was the financial. I have one that understands the whole climate situation, right. but the others, they, they couldn't afford it, you know? Right. Well, if, if I were to bring in a, a child, I would want to at least give them a semi-decent living. And yeah, just, just the past two years, I've finally been financially comfortable. And I'm, yeah, I'm, it takes I'm a while, years. but I'm, I'm 43 years old, so it's going to take the kids even longer to become financially stable than it right. took. Or if ever, if ever, if ever, if I'm not financially debt. stable by any means. And but with so much debt, no one can be anymore. No, no. My, mine mine is lovely. my own fault, though, because I take care of so many animals. So I spend more on the animals than I do my mortgage. My, my, only, debt, my only debt is my car loan. I don't have a car loan, though. That's nice. Well, no, I do. I have a hundred and thirty-five dollar car loan, but I won't have it within a few months. It'll be gone. Um, awesome. But we have like eight cars. Oh my lord! 
Um, we don't use them all. <laughs> right, that's still a lot. But they're all cars that would have been melted down and, and just... But are they? Mm. Are any of them fuel efficient? Oh, yes. The, the 47 Chevy gets better gas mileage than my 2007 Escape. And that's the newest vehicle we have. But it gets way better gas mileage. It doesn't go as fast. That's the only problem with it. But it, but it's super easy to fix. I mean, you can fix it backyard repair. You don't have to order in special parts hardly right. ever. Um, the yeah, that old Chevy or Chevy Dodge. It's a Dodge. I don't know what I'm saying. We have an old Dodge. We have an old Buick. Both of them get better gas mileage than than my 2000 Chevy that I used for work. Mm. But I would rather not have to travel anywhere. I wouldn't have my 2007 Escape if I didn't have to travel for work. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of my uh, Prius. I have a 2017 <clears throat> Toyota Prius. Nice, but I don't like foreign I mean, cars. and el- I know, but... Electric cars, like, it's not a solution. It's not a solution. No, it's not. I didn't say it was the solution, but... I know. I love I love getting 55 miles to the gallon and only I'm paying $40. Sure. 20 Twenty dollars every two weeks. So I, I'm only. That's nice, but how much did you pay for your car payment? Right, but well, I'm. I'm I can't I'm afford paying. that car payment. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, like I said, I've just in the past two years have become financially stable. Yeah. And I'm and I'm and I'm only paying for me, not anyone else. So. Well, then, yeah, you can do that, I guess. Oh my God, we're getting thinking. way off into a rabbit hole. We'll have to talk again because yes. I would to- go totally into the electric car thing and, and have a debate. <laughs> a friendly debate, by the way. Friendly? Right, of course. We'll yeah, go you, friendly. I mean, because we're so addicted to fossil fuels, it's in, in, it's in everything that we do. Right. Right. No yeah. What we produce, no matter what we produce. Or what you do for a living or... Yeah, there's so many things. We could go way more into it, but, um, oh my gosh, we, we should, I don't know if my, this will take forever to download like already or upload whatever, um, already. So definitely let's get together again. Um, did you want to like talk about what's happening tomorrow? Isn't it the big finale of the Extinction Rebellion? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how it pans out. And see, yeah, and then uh, October is supposed to be a whole new start of it, right? Right. Well, I mean, I'm doing my part. You know, if I didn't have to earn a living, I actually would participate in the movement. Um, but right now, all I can do is make some popcorn and watch the show. Um, and speak and, out. And speak out and, and do interviews like we're doing right now. And yeah, which is a conversation, not necessarily, I mean, we're not like... Yeah pushing it as much as like yeah i support i support the notion of saving the environment i have my concerns and i think everybody should be able to question what's going on especially with well, corporate all involvement is, all we can do is educate ourselves and help others get educated right right that, i think that's that's actually one of the reasons i agreed to, to 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 be with you is to help get that message out there and and like one of my favorite phrases of all time is that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You can put the truth out there. What they, what people do with that truth is completely up to them. Exactly. And that's why I, that's why I gave up trying to scream from the mountaintops and try to force people to, to do something. Or I'm not going to try to force. I just want people to, to hear the conversations. That's what I want. And make it mainstream. That's, that's yeah. It. Make and, the and conversations it. okay to have. Right. It's fine right. to have these conversations. Pollu- well, people po- are afraid of people are afraid of death and dying and everything in, that has to associated with it. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not it, so afraid. Like, I'm like afraid for my kids. Taboo. I'm afraid of the suffering that they might go yes. through, but I'm not afraid of dying at all. Um, no. I'm afraid mm-hmm. of what my animals might go through and all that but i'm not afraid of dying myself i if right. i could take my life to save them i would mm-hmm. but it's not going to make a difference i'm i'm better off speaking for for the planet and the nature and all that i think i hope i hope it's my best well, guess if you, if you will allow me in the near future maybe sometime early next year i would love to see salt lake city oh yeah if you're in town if you allow visit. me to fly over there 
<laughs> it's all good with me. I don't know. Well, I mean, you, well, everyone yeah, makes their own live, choices for sure. We have to live with the time given. I, I mean, I feel like we're on borrowed time already. We absolutely are. Yes, absolutely. So we, have make, we have to make the best of it. Absolutely. Well, I have to. I have to formally thank you for this interview, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Patrick. I did too. It went way longer than I intended, but that's okay because it was so much fun. And hopefully I can edit out some of that part in between so it's not such a, a well, mess. Like I, said, like I said in Sandy's interview, I, I, it helps me Deal with process it. things yes. with other people, like-minded people. And we need this community. It's like creating another family and, and, you know, to kill two birds with one stone, it, it's to, I, I like to come visit people. It's the very mm-hmm. least to get my mind off of, get myself yeah. on my own mind. Yeah, and we need more of a Doomer community out in this area, for yes, sure. more supportive. Rather a than Doomer meeting out here would be fab, fabulous. Fabulous, awesome. right? Um, well, but go on well, Peter Miller's. I want to see you do an interview with him. I would love to do that. I would love to talk to Peter. He's open. I mean, he has that thing where you just go... Uh, how do I contact him? He has the information. Actually, um, I can probably forward you his email That'd and you can contact him because the website didn't work very well. I had to actually email him. Um, okay. But I will try to forward you his email and then you can set that up. I'd love to see your interview with him. He does a that great would, he does a great job. So I would look forward to his questions. Oh, yeah. It's fun. He has a list of the questions on his website. So. Oh, right <laughs> So you can see it ahead of time, but I would, I preferred not to pay attention and just have the conversation and you can ask me what I want and I'd answer openly, honestly, just the way I felt. So yeah. that's the way I did it. Okay. We are going to go. Thanks guys for watching. Um, hopefully you guys had a good conversation in the chat, uh, during this premiere. Um, I don't know. Hopefully you enjoyed this conversation and I want to have him on again. Thank you so much, Patrick. We will definitely have you on again. And you're always welcome for Monday Madness. If you ever want to pop in, I always give the link in the chat during the show. So just so you know. (laughs) Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. You have a good day and we will talk to you soon.